Hi, everyone, and welcome to Agent Chat Live. Um, hi, Jay. Hey, Laura. Hi, Lisa. Uh, today, I have Claire Draper. Claire studied queer diversity in children's literature at New York University's Gallatin, I should have asked you how to pronounce that, School of Individualized Study, and while there, interned at Rare Bird Lit, Inkwell Management, and the Children's Book Council. After graduating, they spent a fantastic, if albeit short-lived, two weeks working as a bookseller for The Strand before ending up joining Inkwell Management as a receptionist and agent assistant in 2016. In early 2019, they moved to the Bent Agency to build their list with a collection of very queer books for kids of all ages, including graphic novels, picture books, middle grade, and young adult, as well as feminist and queer memoir, craft, how-to, DIY, and queer or otherwise diverse romance novels. So please welcome Claire. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and you can find Claire's um, website and yeah, website, two websites in the description um, down below. So um, welcome to Agent Chat Live, Claire. So this is a spinoff of Pump Talk Live, which is like my publishing talk show. Um, and my goal here is to kind of help potential clients get to know you a little bit better. Um, so viewers are welcome to drop questions in the comments. But I do want to say starting off that we won't really be asking any questions that like a Google search can answer. Um, and uh, things so things like word count, genre definition, stuff like that. Um, and I also won't be asking anything like what uh, I like to call pre-queries. <laughs> when someone's like, would you be interested in, you know, mermaids in space is always my example. Actually, I would be interested yeah. in mermaids. <laughs> That's what everyone <laughs> says. <laughs> Someone's got to rate that. Um, all right. So we're going to start with a little bit of a softball. So I mentioned it in your bio, but... Um, uh, what categories and genres do you represent? What kind of stuff are you looking for right now? Yeah, so um, kind of my bio sums it up really well. And uh, if any of that changes, you can always find it on my website or the Bent Agency's website or like the, those are kind of the two best places to look. Um, but I'm I'm really taking on um, pretty much everything in the kids space. Um, I have a lot of picture books, though, so I'm not taking on too many new picture books. Um, right now, I want to just sell the ones I already have. <laughs> um, seems a little backwards, I know, but uh, uh, graphic novels are a big thing for me. I have sold maybe 10 or so graphic novels in the past year plus, um, and I'm really excited about them. They're, it's a medium that makes me really happy. And I think people are eager and always looking for new stuff. Um, excuse me. Um, I also do uh, YA middle grade prose, um, both contemporary and genre. Kind of, I used to say that I didn't do horror, thriller, suspense, but that just wasn't true. I just wanted it to be good. So, <laughs> which I think is everyone's kind of baseline. So I realized that was a stupid thing to have as my do not, do not sub to me. Um, and especially after um, a querying person sent me a great, fantastic, like why horror, um, paranormal horror, um, where the main character was gay. Um, and I loved it so much that I took it on. And then I realized I couldn't say I didn't represent horror um because that just wasn't true so you know things 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 work out over the years of something something is a no until it's a yes but mm -hmm. um i really am big on children's books uh i love YA, middle grade picture books graphic novels prose some nonfiction. um but i'm not i'm not too big in the nonfiction space um, and then I, I also represent some adult romance. I would love more craft and how-to books, but I just have gotten next to no submissions from them. Apparently, people are not as big crafters as I am. Um, but uh, yeah, so in the and I also represent some select memoir. Um, it's pretty generally queer and feminist and like very very like millennial-ish memoir. <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but uh, yeah, those are, those are my categories, and um, uh, you know, I I tend not to do 
um, things in the adult space. Um, romance, I, I'm all gung-ho. I used to read romance in high school, like as early as high school. So like I've, I've loved romance for a long time, um, but just other genres and normal adult literary fiction <laughs> does not thrill me. Um, normal adult fiction doesn't thrill me. My partner earlier asked me to name a Stephen King book, and I think I named I named something that wasn't a Stephen King book. It was like <laughs> in the horror genre, but it wasn't actually his. I just had credited him with it. So, um, like, yeah, oh, like Stephen writing. King wrote all the horror ever. <laughs> yeah. So, so for me, I was like, oh, I, 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 the Stephen King book I like is his one about writing. That like mm -hmm. the craft book. Um, it's his memoir, but all the other books that he's written, I'm just not big on those. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but n n and no discredit to his fantastic writing. I just am not a big adult reader. <laughs> nice. Um, Lodestar says he loves your hanging plants. <laughs> oh, thank you. I um, have worked very hard on them. <laughs> I, I, my partner, uh, I try to hide new plants from her. So <laughs> I just, spread them out over the course of the house. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So why um, did you get into agenting? I um, was, uh, I, I actually credit the Twilight movies and my best friend, my high school best friend, Netta, with this. Um, Twilight came out and I, I was kind of going to see it. I don't know. But my best friend, high school best friend, insisted that I go to see Twilight. Um, and I loved it so much and was so crazy for it. I then went and read all of the Twilight series in a matter of weeks. Um, and kind of then I was like, wait, that books are good. Books are good <laughs> and I can read them. Um, I had before then like read books. How old were you? Them. I had 13, 14. Okay. Um, I had enjoyed reading. But like I never did it my on my own, and then all of a sudden, excuse me, I was reading fan fiction. I was writing fan fiction. I was reading books. I was like, uh, I started not not necessarily a book club, but like a secret book exchange where my friends and I would exchange romance novels, um, and like YA books. But I fell in love with reading, and then I quickly learned that I wanted to be a part of that in some way. So I was gonna be an English major, I was gonna go write. Um, I was gonna start crafting my crafting books. And then I got to college and realized, not that I wasn't good at writing, I just wanted to be able to pay the bills. Um, and in the meantime, I was going to go into publishing a super wealthy um, endeavor. Uh, there, is not, <laughs> there is not money, especially in the early years of publishing. Uh, but I, I was like, I'll pay the bills by working in publishing and write on the side. And then I just kind of fell in love with writing. I fell in love with agenting. Um, I worked in a number of different places, but uh, I ended up on the agenting side and decided I liked the freedom to be able to work with whatever I want. Um, I, I Editors have to kind of are at the mercy of um, kind of their senior, more senior staff, and also at the mercy of their imprint's taste. So mm -hmm. if they are in an adult imprint, adult uh, sci-fi imprint, they can't take on a children's middle grade book, mm -hmm. right? So like, I wanted the freedom to be able to do absolutely everything. And because uh, I, I, I wanted to be able to do romance, graphic novels, YA middle grade picture books. I wanted to be able to do mm -hmm. all of it. Memoir, I love a good like celebrity, not celebrity memoir, but like a good like quasi celebrity memoir, mm -hmm. like a good influencer um, memoir. But uh, I, yeah, so I, I got into agenting kind of the normal way. I had internships um, starting at Rare Bird Lit, which is a publishing house in LA. Uh, spent the summer with them, and I think they they were like, "It's a shame you can't stay on. We we would love to hire you." And I was like, uh, "My parents already paid my tuition for my next semester of college. I I have to actually go get my BA." Mm. Um, so I finished college, kept interning, 
And then I worked for worked at the Strand for two weeks, which was an incredibly fulfilling experience, getting to like put a book in someone's hands um, and knowing that they're likely going to read it, especially in the YA section where like, they're like, I read this, what, what next? Um, and then I inter was interviewing at places on my off days. So HarperCollins, like a whole bunch of places. And then I got an offer from a place I had interned in Quell Management and I accepted kind of on the spot. I even had an interview at HarperCollins for their marketing department mm. that afternoon. And I oh, wow. wrote an email saying, I will not be making it to this uh, <laughs> this interview. I've accepted a job. Thank you very much. That sort of mm -hmm. thing. Um, and I hope whoever that recruiter was is not trying to write me for it. But uh, I, I liked the idea of having an eclectic interest, it, eclectic interest and in being able to do what you wanted with the kind of work you wanted mm -hmm. and not, not ever being really told to know. Um, so uh, then I uh, spent some time at Inquil, kind of did did all of the jobs. I emptied the dishwasher. I read queries. I um, like I did everything. I answered the phones. If you called Inquil from the years I was there, in the early years I was there, you heard my voice. That was <laughs> that was me on the answering machine. Um, and then I was assisting two different agents there who were both in the kids space. Um, largely, um, but one of them, Charlie Olson, he he's phenomenal. Um, but he had a list very similar to the list I wanted to build, and I didn't necessarily know that. I was like, how is it that I'm going to say you you author should work with me over Charlie? He has more experience than I do, but we essentially have the same taste. We love <laughs> like diverse, fun graphic novels. So it there it was a hard sell to in my head to why people should work with me over him mm -hmm. just because we had such similar similar visions I think for our lists um, and I still think he has great taste and I still buy all of his books um, so uh, but uh, yeah so I uh, called up Jenny Bent at the Bent Agency who had offered me a job. Um, kind of on the spot when I first started in publishing. Mm. Um, I was like six months into working at Inkwell. And there was this like large event, um, the SCBWI like party that happens every year in January. Um, that's like an awards night now. And I, I think it still kind of was then, but it was essentially a wine and cheese night. Like you pretty much just went to go eat and talk with people. Um, and, and see, see some picture book illustrators, um, portfolios, but the majority of it was the potato bar and, um, getting to drink with friends. And so that night after the event ended, we were all hanging out in the bar afterwards. I met Jenny Bent, who is now my boss and the head of the Bent agency. And she offered me a job pretty much off the, on the spot. We, we talked for all of five minutes. I don't really even remember about what. But then she offered me a job in front of both of my bosses at the time. <laughs> and so I just kind of took her card, remembered her name, and was like, I'm only six years into my job. I can't move already. Um, so I worked for another couple of years, was deciding it was time to start building my list, and then came to the bench agency. Um, and I was really excited about doing graphic novels and doing like, pretty much just all queer graphic novels. If you looked at any of my um, deal announcements of the past um, six months, eight months, they're all pretty much like lesbian pirates or uh, <laughs> lesbians in space or lesbians on earth and <laughs> going to space, like pretty much, pretty much just all queer stuff across the board. Lesbian and mermaids so, in space. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I, uh, was really excited to build my list here and we do a lot the bent agency does a lot of children's books does a lot of romance but uh there wasn't there was just an opportunity to kind of both learn but also have my own niche mm -hmm. um 
So, because there were people certainly doing graphic novels at the Fence Agency prior, um, but not necessarily their whole list. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm at the Fence Agency and I love it. I love my colleagues and we do great stuff and I really enjoy it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's the long answer. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, all right. So this question has a little bit of a preface because I find if I ask it straight up, like people are too humble. So the preface is don't be humble. (laughs) Um, I'm purposely giving you a chance to brag about yourself. So take advantage of it. Um, so if someone's thinking about querying you and your wish list lines up with their work, why would someone query you? Why would, why should someone want to work with you? Sure. Yeah. So, um, uh, my wish list is largely queer stuff. Like if you're, if you're queer, if you're a person of color, if you're, um, kind of, uh, like it, if you have something that checks a box of a story that hasn't been heard before, I want to hear it. And I think other people want to hear it too. Um, I, why you would want to work with me is that I make myself available. Um, I, we were talking prior to this call. I'm up in the evenings. So if you're like me, nine, 10 o'clock at night, and you're just like, I'm stressing about my manuscript. And I see that my agent is tweeting. <laughs> text me. I have clients text me all the time saying, Hey, this is this is going on. This is happening. Can we fix it even during normal business hours? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not so much that I don't have workplace boundaries. I do. Um, there are important things going on. I push it for later. But I like to think that this is an open relationship and an open conversation. And I want I want you to be able to talk talk with me as kind of um, your eyes and ears and like your second brain, if you will. So I'm here as a resource. I'm here as um, advice. And there are plenty of people who are similar to me who I like. I think there are a lot of good agents in publishing, especially now. Especially now, there are lots of like young, good, queer agents who would be a perfect fit for a lot of young queer people out there, who are, or old queer people out there who are trying to sell their work. Um, and you don't have to be queer to query me. It just happens to be that that's a lot of my list. <laughs> um, but I think there's why me is is just I I, I love your work and I I want to work with it. Um, uh, querying me is, is not all that, uh, you're, you're just going to fill out query manager. Like it's not, it's not all that taxing though. The stress of that is unparalleled, but I mean, I, when I get something that I love and I can't stop thinking about, um, I want to work with that person. And I've had people, I've had people who I've had full on conversations with, I've offered them representation and they went with someone else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm especially who you want with is a good person. Like I, I'm not, I'm not mad. And please do tell me when your book is on shelf so I can be the first in line to pre-order. Um, <laughs> I have, I never have hard feelings about someone picking someone else. Um, and I, I just think we're here to make good books and we should all kind of be in that together. Um, that's a meandering way to say, oh, like work, work, work with me because um, I'm going to, I'm going to be there for you and I'm going to stand up for what, Um, your thoughts and feelings are and make sure your voice is heard and your story is heard. Um, But also let's make some fun books. (laughs) Cool. All right. Uh, We have the first question from Patreon supporter. Um, So if you support my Patreon at $5 more a month, you can submit uh, ahead of time questions ahead of time for any of the guests. So um, this is from Lodestar, who's here tonight. I saw him commenting earlier. He's the one who liked your hanging plants. Um, (laughs) On Instagram, I saw you posted a pic of a playbill. What is your favorite musical or play? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, (laughs) My, all of my friends are musical theater people I like in college had my my like close friend group from college that we're all still friends now um like eight or so people were all musical theater kids like they were all actors I don't really know how I ended up being the only one who wasn't an actor (laughs) in that group but um I am not as musically versed as as some other people but I um really like Sweeney Todd I Mm. really like 
Um, uh, Fiddler on the Roof. My my dad is a big fan of Fiddler on the Roof, so one of my like earliest memories of a musical is watching that with him. Oh. Um, and I know they're not really musicals, but I love Disney movies, and so like I like any I, oh Jingle Jangle that just premiered that like that musical movie so perfect so great. I wish the sound balance was off. It felt like I was watching the BBC, but it beautiful production and like. I, I love it when I'm watching something and someone starts singing and they're just so moved by emotion that they have to sing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's such an interesting medium. Um, so yeah, those, cool. those two, those two favorite musicals, but I also have a lot of favorite plays as well. Um, so like waiting for Godot mm. um, is one of my favorite plays, but yeah, great awesome. question. Um, all right. So, uh, the next question is a little, (laughs) a little bit heavier. Um, so we, a lot of times when this question is asked, it's asked kind of in the, in the vein of like, if you had a magic wand and you could change one thing about the publishing industry, what would it be? Um, which is fun, but also like, I guess I'm a pragmatist, you know, (laughs) like I'm a realist. So I'm like, (laughs) If, uh, you know, realistically, let's say you were like the CEO of like Penguin Random House or whatever, and you had the ability to make a big change, what do you think you would change about the publishing industry? Um, I think in some ways it's already happening. Um, I, I would let publishing be remote. I mean, we are remote right now because of COVID and I really hope that doesn't change because I think realistically publishing has been so white, so heterosexual, so ableist, like able-bodied for so long, um, it, because, um, publishing is largely based in New York or, or London, but we're, we're, we're so localized in such an expensive city and we're kind of elitist. Um, I would really love if we could up, um, up salaries across the board. I is they're starting to do it. Um, but like an entry level position in New York City at any company, like any any person who has a a a bachelor's degree goes to apply in any job in New York City, they would laugh at forty five thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. But that's we're excited in publishing that we finally reached forty five thousand dollars a year. So for me, I would really love if we could pay people their worth um i know that's not realistic because publishing is that much money like there aren't that there aren't that many wealthy authors so uh but i i think you know people in publishing don't just work nine to five they work nine to five they get home and then they go read for four more hours Mm -hmm. so i wish we could pay people their worth, but also diversify publishing. I think this is this is said more beautifully and said more um, more often by by people much smarter than me and 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 who have been like credited in in the industry as doing doing kind of this work of diversifying publishing. But I I think it I've I've thought and I've thought for a while that we needed to pay people a living wage and we need to let them live wherever they want. Like I, I, my, my first job in publishing paid like $31,000 when I started. Like Mm -hmm. if I didn't have my parents helping me out, I was not going to be able to afford my rent or food. Like no way Mm -hmm. that like there, that wasn't realistic. Like I, I had back problems. How was I supposed to pay for my, my huge copay for my physical therapy appointments when I, and like, how was I supposed to eat and pay the bills? Like, anyways, this is a whole thing. Capitalism is bad, but, <laughs> um, and I think it, anyone in any, any industry, whether you're flipping burgers or the CEO of a company, you need to be paid a living wage. Um, but I think that would change a significant number of problems if we, A, listened to our younger staff um, in publishing and pay them a living wage and let them work where they want to work. If someone is based in Arizona, that shouldn't encumber them from working 
at Penguin Random House just because they're not in the right location. Like there might be someone perfect in the middle of Iowa who who has great things to say and has a great editorial eye or or is a marketing genius, but they're they're based somewhere that isn't realistic. So anyways, that 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 is my magic wand poof change. Yeah. Uh, that I would like to make happen. Though, of course, diversity doesn't happen overnight. Those changes don't happen overnight. And I think there are lots of people in publishing, especially people of color and women of color, queers of color, who are saying important things about how they're not listened to by management and publishing. So I think it's important to like listen to them in all of this process. But like, um, we need more of them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see where, um, oh, okay. I got lost in my notes. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go to, let's do the quick round. So, um, I just have like five questions, um, that I want you to answer in like, let's say seven seconds or less. Yeah. Like, um, so the first one actually has a little bit of a story to it. So when I was first kind of coming up with this series idea, I couldn't figure out what to name it. I've never titled anything in my life. Like, <laughs> I think my publicist or my editor has titled every book I've ever published. Um, and I had asked kind of the Patreon people, the Patreon supporters, you know, uh, what I should call the show. And Lodestar had suggested, I think it was Lodestar, um, snack time with an agent. <laughs> which I really liked because I just thought it was fun. And I thought it was like, it indicated kind of the casual, like chatty nature. Um, mm -hmm. But I was also concerned that people would think it's only for like kid lit people. Um, um, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So this question, the first question in the quick round is, came from that basically. Um, so the question is, what is your favorite snack? Um, my favorite snack is uh, chips and guac. Not not out of a stupid package at the grocery store. I mean, like homemade, fresh avocados, lime juice, tomato, red onion, like seasoning salt, like mm -hmm. seasoning of any any kind of salt. Really, um, is my favorite snack. And especially if they're the my partner hates this. Um, especially if they're the lime Tostitos chips. Um, I I love them super limey. Um, both my guac and my um, chips. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, guacamole and and chips would be my favorite thing. Nice. Um, what is your preferred caffeine source? Oh, um, I'm not crazy big on caffeine, um, but coffee and coffee and tea are close. Uh, tea is sometimes easier though because I have acid reflux and coffee does make mm. it weak. Um, so there's uh, the regulars, uh, especially on Wednesdays. Um, there's like this ongoing war on coffee versus tea. I think they're really just trolling me because I don't drink tea. So, um, so the tea brigade is like strong. <laughs> uh, is there a word that you irrationally hate? Um, moist. I think it's like a gross, weird word. Like it never, it, it, it can be used in like, romance novels a lot and I it just it's not a sexy word it's not a fun word it's it's not no I hate the word moist yeah yeah that's that's the word I hate yeah I think J Jay is like the president of the tea brigade so <laughs> <laughs> well it to defend my tea side I my first experience with having tea was high tea so like the full like three course meal of like the finger mm -hmm. sandwiches and scones and like tart desserts. So wow. like that is the way to do tea and get introduced to it. And I also started liking fruity, 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 fruity stuff um, and like super flavored teas. And now I have grown to like black tea, but um, I, I started with the sugar and fruit tea. Mm. So um okay uh you said you like memoir so you might have a answer to this um what person do you most want to read a memoir from that you know of hasn't written one? Oh, that i know hasn't written one i mean carrie fisher um was it, it has written some of my most favorite memoirs um and especially the audiobooks are just so funny um who who hasn't written a memoir that i think 
Has Nicole Byer written a memoir? I don't know. She would be. She would have a funny memoir. All right, she has a cool. funny. Uh, she has funny podcasts, but I feel like she would. She would knock it out. Also, maybe Lizzo. Um, mm. But I know Lizzo can be pretty private. But I, I think she'd have an interesting memoir. Also, yeah. Janelle Monae. That's a lot of answers, but yeah, those are my. Those are my. That's good because the, the last couple of people that were like, I don't know, I can't think of anyone. So you answered, you made up for it. That. <laughs> All right. So last question, our last quick round question: Who's your favorite superhero? Oh, um, Carol Danvers, uh, Captain Marvel is is a nice favorite, but it's almost a safe choice. Um, and I really just I watched Captain Marvel, and I was like, her in that it, it, it's really a Brie Larson thing, but her in that nine inch nails like shirt wearing the flannel and the leather jacket and yeah. riding off on the stolen motorcycle. That was just like a moment for me. Uh -huh. Um uh but I like I like a lot of superheroes. Um Deadpool is funny. Um but I think like I I and I also my I, the one who I probably have read the most of is Wonder Woman. Mm. Um I love those comics. So those are my three answers. I know right. you asked for one. <laughs> <laughs> all right um so let's talk about your kind of agenting process a little bit i'm going to scroll back up because tamara had asked a question and tamara had to go back to the work but um she'll watch later uh after a full request what is your process in deciding if you want to rep or pass, offer rep or pass yeah so i um like to read something and I pretty much have to be caught up right away in it. In like first 10 pages, I pretty much have to not put it down the second I put it, pick it up. Mm -hmm. um, like I need all other work to be set aside. Like it needs to be so good that I, I'm just like, the world doesn't matter. This is the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. um, and when it is that good, it's easy. It's easy as just saying, I really love your work. Let's call make something happen. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a full manuscript. I have a lot of illustrators on my list, so I tend to just find them by reaching out to them. Um, mm -hmm. I I cold email people and I'm like, hey, do you have an agent? All the time. Um uh for for illustrators, uh and for some comics writers. But um for once I once I request a full manuscript, I do take some time to read it. My reading list is really long right now. Um, but once generally like once I read a couple pages and if it's just so good, I don't I don't put it down. I ignore the rest of my schedule for the day and and then you're hearing hearing from me and I'm offering rep right away. I have been mad sometimes that I sat on a manuscript for like too long. And then all of a sudden I did get to it and I was like, gosh, I'm so mad. I didn't read this earlier. This was sitting in my inbox the whole time. It's kind of like when you get an uh, an email update for a fan fiction you've been reading and all of a sudden you're like, you, you forget about it, whatever. And then you're like, all this time, all this time, this perfect chapter was sitting right here and I could read it. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, I get disappointed in myself that I don't have um, a quicker pace when reading, but uh, yeah, I. So it's like it's kind of like a thing. gut decision, like you you know, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah, like um, things things sometimes need work, and I'm not I'm not afraid of doing work with an author. Um, so uh, it's pretty it's a pretty easy decision once I start reading to kind of get in the rhythm of something and and offer rep. Nice. Um, so then if you sign a client, um, what can they expect after that? What does your process normally look like? And, you know, how does your communication go? That kind of stuff. Yeah. So it, um, I like to do phone call conversations before I send an edit letter. Cause sometimes I've thought of something that is stupid and ridiculous and doesn't really work, um, as a change to your book. So I like to have a conversation about even with the offer call about what edits I think we should make before going on submission. Um, I like to do a decent, um, my agency is pretty editorial. Um, I'm probably not even the most editorial. I'm not, I, I know I'm not the most editorial person at my agency, but um, 
uh, I like to do it, do an, a round of edits or two, um, and then we go on submission, um, what, however long that takes. If you're quick at editing and that took a month or two weeks, or that takes six months, a year, I'm fine with that, whatever pace works for you. And then we go on submission. And sometimes submission takes is is really short and we have offers in two weeks, three weeks, or a week even. And sometimes it can take six, seven months, maybe longer. Um, I One of the first books I sold, I couldn't sell it as a YA novel and I just sold it, uh, it's not announced yet, I just sold it as a graphic novel um, instead to Dark Horse. Um, mm. And so like, I don't, I don't really give up on projects. Um, once something kind of is in my head, I want to make it happen. Um, but we, in so far as communication is concerned, I, I like to be pretty open and I like easy conversation. A lot of my clients text me or Twitter DM me, Instagram messages, whatever it is. Um, and we just keep open lines of communication going. Um, I want my clients to feel like I'm reachable and I'm here to listen to their concerns. And and it's an open process. I I know different agents feel differently about this. As soon as we're on submission, I pretty sh freely share my submission list and my um my pitch letter. I mm -hmm. might change that in as the years go on, but I like sharing it now um because I think it provides some sense of comfort to know who it's with and the authors themselves can stalk editors on Twitter and have hopes and dreams. Um, <laughs> Cause I think, I think the process can be a little of submission can be a little daunting and just not knowing who it's with and then getting passes is it can be annoying mm -hmm. um, and sad. So I like to share as much as I can. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, so Lodestar had also asked uh, your wish list. Make sure to uh, says make sure to respect the roles of HEA and give me some good tropey filled romance. Um, okay. So I know the answer to this, but his question is, what's HEA? <laughs> uh, happily ever after. If you um, follow any romance novel um, writers, there uh, there's one I follow on TikTok. Um, and she's like, uh, she does really funny reactions. But HEA, I think it's also called something else, is happily ever after. So if you're writing a romance novel and they don't have, they don't get together in the end, that's not a romance novel. That's a nice piece of fiction, but it's not a romance novel. If if it's like, if there are kind of too many realistic struggles to get over, if they're like, like the romance should be passionate and it should be easy and should be like like attainable um i i could probably go on but uh i i'm big on like if you you're writing in romance uh, unlike other categories that don't have as many rules if you're writing romance you really have to know and respect the rules of the genre because otherwise you're not writing romance you're you might be writing women's fiction or you might be writing literary fiction but you're not writing um romance mm -hmm. so yeah i wrote yeah, an article cool. for book riot um and the title was if it doesn't have an hea or fn hfn it's not romance <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah it yeah i'm i'm big on my happily ever afters and that's and and because that is the one part of reading queries that is annoying is because sometimes people don't follow the rules of the genre specifically in romance and then I get disappointed when they don't get together in the end. Mm. And I'm like, this isn't the rule. This is how this is supposed to work. If I read a romance novel, I want my happily ever after. I, I deserve my happily ever after. Yeah. I don't read adult fiction for this reason. I like happy endings. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so it's funny because I actually didn't read romance. Um, for and I wrote an article at Book Right about this as well for a lot of different reasons. And then um I became a publicist at Entangled and I was mainly interested in working on their teen books. But at the time that wasn't how they structured. Like you just got assigned whatever book, right? Um mm -hmm. and I the first couple of books I got assigned were like 
contemporary romances and I wanted I wanted to do a good job I wanted to represent them also I read them and I uh, fell in love with them and that's how I started reading <laughs> romance so um, romance is something I think people fall in love with like I I remember to this day the look of disdain I brought a romance novel to like a a beach cookout that a family friend was hosting and it was just all my brother's family like all my brother's friends and their families mm. and we were a guest of some other people but there weren't people there weren't kids my age there because they it was a friday night they were hanging out with their own friends i was like no i'm gonna read and i'll read on the book i'll, I'll read my book on the beach with my family um and eat some hot dogs it's totally good but i remember the look of disdain on this this family friend's face when it, you know because there's the naked man on the cover of the book yeah. and stuff like that of him looking at the book i was reading and he's like you can read better stuff than that i'm like mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. read, so who's <laughs> here? And I do also read like Shakespeare and yeah, like Beowulf, and I read other stuff. I just prefer romance novels. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, Jay said all genre romance are love stories, but not all love stories are genre romance. Correct. Yeah, yeah that's I think a great way to put that. The like, m not all squares are rectangles. <laughs> all squares are rectangles, not all rectangles are squares. It's a great yeah. way to put that. Um, there are perfectly good love stories and perfectly good romantic storytellings that are not category romance. Mm -hmm. So, like, my biggest piece of advice to writers is to, like, study your genre, study, study your contemporaries. If you're saying there's nothing like this else out there, that shouldn't be the case. There should be other books similar enough to yours that there's an audience. So, that is um, All right. So what is your single best query letter tip? I often use some things from clients' queries in writing my pitches. And I think the best thing is to think of it like a pitch. Um, and I, I like to, this is also a writing tip, is start with one line. Like try and summarize your story into an elevator pitch of just one sentence. And if you can't do that, your story is too complicated. And like you, you should actually be able to get into an elevator and tell someone what happens in your book before the doors open and they have to leave. Um, in a reasonably sized elevator. <laughs> Phone up elevator. But the kind of point is, is that your query letter needs to have a strong base. So there should be kind of one line. I start with one line that summarizes the whole, that summarizes kind of the, the big piece of the book, which is the main conflict um, and the main character, main character, main conflict, and then build it from there. Um, make sure to always include like Kind of the super typical things like a good bio and but i tend to ignore the introductions of like i i do read read the introductions of like i met you at a conference or something like that but i really like someone who writes i really like pitches that just jump in and start telling me the story that are like in this sixty thousand word ya story that's really short for ya anyways in this 80,000 word YA story, uh, 16 year old ex name character um, gets stung by a bee in front of his crush and swells up like a balloon. And all of a sudden his prom plans are ruined. Like done, package it, there we go. Like that, that is a whole story. And I don't, I, I, I don't need to know too much more. You gotta set the stakes, set them high and do it in a short amount of time. I think it's always so funny when people write query letters that are so long, it's longer than the sample you send in. Mm -hmm. that, that's not usually true, I'm exaggerating, but like mm -hmm. be short to the point and set the stakes high. That's okay, hyperbole is my favorite literary device. So <laughs> understatement is my second favorite, so it gets really interesting here. Good contradiction. <laughs> Um, all right. So here's a, a fun question, kind of a just for fun question. Uh, do you have any good literary names for cats or dogs? 
good literary names for cats or dogs. Well, li this is literary adjacent. Uh, my cat's name is Arthur, and uh, I, he came with the name, the shelter named him that. But then when we got our second cat, my partner wanted to go with the theme of Arthurian legend and named her cat Morgana. Nice. After like, the witch who gives him the sword. Uh -huh. um, so I would like to have an entire Knights of the Round Table. <laughs> um, that would be perfect. Uh, uh -huh. Dog or cat, that, that would be awesome. Um, I also think that like people who do like Edgar Allan Poe kind of names are always so funny. Like like it's dark and creepy, but it's like a, a super happy dog. Um, I always think those are hilarious. Um, but no, I Arthur and Morgana are as, as literary as I've gotten. I ha did always think I was gonna one day name one of like I was gonna have a ginger cat and I was gonna name it Crookshanks. Um, <laughs> but n now that just kind of <laughs> yeah. too, too, too obvious of a choice, and also J.K. Rowling and yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but no, I um, I and also Fluffy, like. Three headed dog, Fluffy. That's, mm -hmm. that's a great name for a dog. I would love to have a great Dane and name it Fluffy. Because great <laughs> Danes also aren't Fluffy, so that would just be funny. Great Dane in a New York City apartment, though. <laughs> yeah, not realistic. <laughs> um, my dog has a literary name. It's named after Ooh. a book. My dog is named Jasper. Do you know Ooh. where that's from? That's not, that's not Twilight Jasper. It is. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Also, great choice because it's not the obvious one. You're like, yeah. oh, Jasper's an interesting name. Yeah. Um, I got him yeah, 12 years ago. Ah, uh, perfect. Yeah, mm -hmm. I am so glad I was not old enough to get tattoos when Twilight came out. I would have absolutely gotten like my back cover, all of my body covered in like stupid Twilight tattoos. <laughs> so, um, thank God for that. And they would have been bad too. They would have been like poorly done. But I have yeah. taste now. Um, and I probably will still get a Twilight tattoo someday, maybe. Um, but I would have gotten like the lion and the lambs. I, I had mm. for a long time my passcode, my four digit passcode on my phone was lamb. Oh, for a long time, too long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Jay said, I still think Catechus is an underrated name. <laughs> oh, Catechus is good. Yeah, no, that, that is good. Um, what what would be some other good ones though? No, I like I'm, I'm sure um, like some of the punny ones, but I'm not. I feel like I'm not clever enough to come up with them. <laughs> well, and my problem would be like I I would have to, like if I'm disciplining them and I have to yell like a pun, it would just make me laugh. <laughs> and then I like I want to be mad. Like when my cat bites my feet, I want to be mad that they're biting my feet. I don't want to mm -hmm. be mad. I don't want to start laughing because I have a funny name. <laughs> Dignified. You can have know. like a discipline alternate name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> um, none of us have like a single name for our pet. Like. <laughs> oh no! Like Morgana, my or my partner's cat Morgana is also baby. Mm -hmm. um, Shadow. Arthur is pretty much just Arthur, but mm -hmm. she's we used to have more names for him. Yeah. Um. So we had a question from the viewer. This is probably going to be the last question. Uh, what do you like to see in author, illustrator, graphic novel submissions? Um, I like to see like a small number of pages of finished art, um, but I like to see a good idea. Like a, a graphic novels sell on submission, but I like to see that the story is thought out because sometimes with that that sort of scenario. You might say, I, I have the, the idea figured out, like it's mermaids in space, right? Um, but I don't really know what the conflict is. I don't really know how the character struggles. I don't really know the character development, um, stuff like that. So I want to I wanna see that you fully envisioned kind of this world. Um, so, and, and sometimes it's as simple as like a couple drawings and like a quick description can do that. Um, or something, sometimes it's a bit longer, but like, make sure you're, this is true of kind of everything, not just graphic novels, make sure your conflict is really solid and how your character changes is solid. Um, 
but other than that i just like good art like i like pretty things if you you can't see it right now but i have like art here if you ever saw my apartment it's just covered in in fan art like i uh, like valkyrie is sitting right here um my partner's <laughs> like shiro from uh, voltron is right there like i have a jen bartell thing right there catra is there like we we have fan art all over our apartment i love graphic novels my partner is so mad at me that i haven't caught up on all of the webtoon she's reading um but have good art and have a good like good story just to grip us um graphic novels like some of my favorite graphic novels are the ones that just carry me along with a good character um mm -hmm. beetle and the hollow bone snapdragon um are two of my favorites and not mine obviously but i don't know why that's obvious but to me i'm like oh that i'm i'm not i'm not their agent so it's obvious but both of those stories have like an interesting premise and a good character for us to just like love like i want to root for the main character even if they're a villain even if i'm following a villain i want to mm -hmm. root for them i want to cheer for them make me fall in love mm -hmm. um, and good art i like good art um even if you do this is something for me that will not be true for everyone else if you do like fan cast of your characters you do like here are my oc characters but I drew them as Catra and Adora from she -Ra. Like, I love that, send that to me. I once was interested in a client um, who had, I, I didn't end up signing them, but I really loved that they had like a cool um, original Yu-Gi-Oh! like short comic, um, mm. like, like completely fan, like fan, yeah. fan fiction Yu-Gi-Oh! comic. So have something, have something good and interesting to say and, have fun art. Get me hooked. My um client who are illustrators who send me like pictures of their their characters. I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is my character now. This is my child <laughs> now. Um I am very fierce about my client's characters. So make me fall in love with yours. Nice. All right. So um, that's pretty much all for tonight. Claire, thank you so much for coming on yeah. and chatting and answering everyone's questions. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight live. If you're watching the replay, thanks for that. And if you're listening on, on podcasts, I'm happy to have you however you're watching or listening. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Everyone stay safe. Um, Wash your hands. Oh, I do want to say uh, Pub Talk Live on Saturday. I haven't put it up yet, but uh, my guest co-host for next week is going to be JL, the author of Wings of Ebony. And my special guest is going to be Daphne, the founder of Illumicrate. So um, tune in on Saturday, next Saturday for that. And uh, that's it. Everyone stay safe. Wash your hands. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.